Today we have with us Jean-Philippe Ketkuti, the managing partner of Ketkuti Kauki Advocates. He's an expert in residency and investment programs and of course all the tax planning that comes with them. Today we're going to be talking about the problems that non-EU nationals have trying to enter the EU and what the possible solutions are. Perhaps you can start by telling me why is it such a complex and cumbersome system to get into the EU? That's right. Yes, uh, we, many, many uh, international families and, 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 and you know, employees of international companies that need to travel, whether for work, for simply for business, uh, or for short visits to the European Union uh, member states, are often finding it difficult um, because it simply takes a process of applying for a visa which is a process that sometimes takes weeks. Um, frequent business travelers are often getting multiple entry Schengen visas, but it is still a bit of a burden uh, to always have to think and remember, I need a visa for that country, I need to think in advance. So uh, what we see is many, many uh, business families want this problem solved and want to acquire at least a residency status in one of the Schengen countries so that, thanks to that, they can travel freely without a visa um, to any of the 26 uh, Schengen countries. Okay, you've mentioned Schengen. Perhaps you can explain to me what the distinction is between the EU and Schengen. Yes, so since 1985, a process has been started with the, with the signing of the Schengen Area Treaty uh, in Schengen, which is a, a, a small uh, city in Luxembourg. And back in 1985, we had five of the then EEC countries uh, agree to abolish internal borders and passport control. So you literally go through from one to the other without having to be stopped? That's right, that's right. And, and since then, the number has grown. Uh, we are now um, looking at 26 countries, which include largely most European Union member states, or most of the 28 members of the European Union. But then we have notable members of the EU that are still not part of it. So England, Ireland, um, uh, Cyprus, Bulgaria, uh, these are not part of the, of the Schengen area. A number of non-European Union member states have decided to sign, to, to sign up and are part of it, which includes notably uh, Norway, uh, Liechten, um, uh, Switzerland, actually. So these are very important members that uh, you know, have, over the years, allowed entry without a visa, thanks to holding a Schengen uh, a visa in any Schengen country. So, um, and what this applies whether you're going across a land border or even a, an air or sea that's border. Right. So many of our clients who, who, who are resident in Malta, for example, would would not need to have uh, to show you know their passport uh, to cross between Malta and Sicily, even if, they, if they're taking the ferry. Okay, and even if they were to be asked for for it uh, by virtue of having a residence permit validly obtained in Malta, they, can, they, they, are, they will definitely be allowed entry into Italy. Well, this is interesting now because you've now mentioned if they have a residence permit. So what, how do you circumvent this whole problem by getting either residence or citizenship in one of the, yes. the Schengen countries? A very legitimate and mainstream way of, of facilitating travel to the Schengen area is to actually choose one of the Schengen states uh, possibly one that, that offers a means of obtaining uh, some sort of residency status in the long term. Because thanks to that residency status, uh, possibly permanent residency status in the Schengen country, then you are able to enjoy the same uh, freedom of movement in the Schengen area. Malta is one such country. So in Malta, for instance, there are a number of routes. One is based on investment of 250,000 euros in government bonds and the other is based on an annual uh, annuity payable at 15,000 euros per year for f five years only. Um, and both of them give you permanent residency in Malta for life. And because Malta is a Schengen state since 2007, um, being a, uh, you know, a resident of, of that country means you're able to travel freely to the Schengen area. You said travel freely, but of course there are a number of non-EU citizens who are interested in doing a lot more than just visiting or, right. or meeting their business uh, associates. What about people who want to work or live or study in the Schengen area? Under the Schengen Treaty, uh, a residence permit holder of any one of the members of the Schengen Treaty uh, is able to spend up to three months in every six-month period in that country. And they are not automatically allowed to work uh, or reside longer. 
Um, so anyone who, who wants to work there will either use the benefit of being already resident in one of those countries and then apply for a work permit, or else uh, the more wealthy would go for a, a program that grants more than residency. Instead, they, they apply for citizenship by investment. Presumably a lot more onerous uh, conditions, no? That's right, that's right. So one, to obtain citizenship, one needs to, to follow the, the citizenship laws of each individual country um, and, uh, and there Schengen would be less relevant because then there is a bigger visa-free area uh, than Schengen, which is the EU, which, which is based on your nationality of, of an EU member state. Because nationality of, let's say, Malta would automatically translate into rights as a citizen of the European Union and enable you to travel, not only travel or visit, but to actually establish yourself permanently in any one of these 28 member states. And is it very expensive to become a citizen? Is it, it Clearly, it can't be that easy. It, well, it, it, in many countries there is a, both an investment criteria, but also a, a number of years of, of actual physical presence. In, in the UK, for instance, you would need to become first a permanent resident after five years and then wait an additional year before you can apply for citizenship. In, in Cyprus, for instance, you need to make an investment in real estate or a mix of real estate and bonds of, in the amount of 2 million euros to be kept for, five, for, for three years and uh, one would need to hold at least a residence permit for, for six months before being granted citizenship. But still, it's a relatively fast way of obtaining citizenship, but not a, not a very cheap way. Malta offers uh, an, a route of investment through the Individual Investor Programme where on approval, only on approval, one needs to make a contribution uh, of €650,000 to the government. That is a non-refundable let's say, donation uh, which entitles you to citizenship. There is a waiting period of 12 months during which you need to show a connection with Malta but not necessarily significant physical presence because as we know the, general, the average global citizen is actually spending a lot of time all over the world. But still, Malta and Cyprus then offer you the fastest tracks to membership of a member of the European Union. Thank you, Dr. Gertkuti. I'm sure you found that very interesting. There's a lot of details which you need to look up, but at least that should give you a broad idea of what is available.